Hello. So first of all, it's confession time. I have three confessions to make. First one, can you hear it? My heartbeat? It's horrible. Second one, my name is Linia and I'm a radioholic. And the third one is, I'm sorry James, I'm sorry Matt, but I was supposed to be talking about how to create relevant, memorable and effective radio ads and trails, but I'm not. We're just going to tattoo ourselves instead. <laughs> but what has radio got to do with tattoos? And you'll see it soon. So check under your chairs. You will find little candy chewing gums. Can you hear, find it? It's stuck on the side of the chair. Has anybody found it? <laughs> why tattoo and why radio? Because I want you to remember when you're writing radio ads or trails, your words need to tattoo themselves into the brain, the heart of your listeners. And only then will they open the wallets. So, got it? Unwrap it, take the tattoo out, and tattoo it on your hand. I want to see it. I love tattoos. Go on. Who'll be the first one? I see this gentleman here. Yeah? Okay. So, have you opened it? Good. So, this is what needs to be done in order for your words to be memorable, in order for them to stay in the minds of your listeners. The listener is just filled with information every day, and you got to get her attention and hold it. But what is attention, right? What is the definition of attention? Being offered a thought more interesting than a thought somebody is thinking right now. And this is how you got to do it with your ads or trails, right? They come up, they appear, the mind is going like that, and you need to get their attention. Otherwise, what you're doing is irrelevant. So Chuck Bloor is an amazing radio guy, um, and he said, radio ads and trails need to be a welcome intrusion into audience complacency. Isn't that just an amazing welcome intrusion? I love it. And remember always that when you're writing ads or when you're writing trails, you are the director of their thoughts. You have the power to lead them anywhere you want, like he did. So, seven tools for memorable and effective radio trails. Tool number one, even on the radio, and this happens a lot when I go into the studio and I work with people who want to voice my ads, I just tell them, be human. And this is what they forget. They see the microphone and they just go, oh, and then I stand in front of them and I say, read my script and then tell it to me. And I stand like this in front of them because I want them to talk to me, to a friend. So what happens is David Ogilvy said, consumers are your wife and she's not stupid. And this is what we sometimes do with radio ads and trails. We scream at people. So instead of screaming, I tell, let's seduce them with words. Okay? And be relevant for her life, okay? Think about the conversation that she's already having about the product or a service in her head, and only then write a radio commercial. Don't build monuments. Don't build monuments means that don't write ads that will win awards. That's not good. You're writing ads that are effective, full stop. Okay, so say it, own it, read it. What does that mean? When you go into the studio, I want you to say it to me, okay? I even let my uh, people that do the, of the voicing of my commercial, I, read the, I, I leave them the freedom to put some of their own words in it, not the most important words, okay? Verbs, I don't let them touch verbs, but I let them touch everything else. Mommy. Mommy. Mm. Oh, Megan, what time is it? Oh, God. I had a bad dream. Oh, come here and let me hold you. 
I brought my blanket. Okay, good. Here. Mommy, can I ask you a question? Yeah, shh. Don't wake Daddy. Are you, are you and Daddy going to die? Oh, honey, that was a terrible dream. Don't worry about that. I was all alone, and I was scared. When you think about the reasons to stay as healthy as you can, look straight into a child's eyes. When you think about what you can do to stay healthy, look into Kaiser Permanente. We're the one health plan you can sign up with for life. Hey, Mom, Daddy's making funny noises. Is he okay? <laughs> yes, he's okay. He's just snoring. Go to sleep. Nobody can care for you better than Kaiser Permanente. Ask your benefits manager for details. That's just human, and this is the ads that are effective. Number two, paint pictures, yes? Radio is the most beautiful visual medium, full stop. Um, and remember that whenever you are writing for radio, remember that the people have to visualize what you're saying because people will never do anything in the real life that they haven't done in their head first. Okay? If you take anything away from this presentation, have that in mind. So you got to visualize, they have to visualize the results that they have with your service or product. Okay? Not the benefits, but the results. And as listeners see what you have written, they will put their emotion, memories, experience into your radio ad, which does what? They become more attached to it. The radio ad becomes more personal. The, there is, they don't build any fences towards your brand, and the brand gets under the skin. And then we have the effectiveness. Sound familiar? What you're hearing is a cat in a dryer. While not an everyday occurrence, it does happen and can be quite messy. That's why at Umax Appliance Technologies, we make 100% cat-safe dryers. When Fluffy decides to curl up in some nice warm laundry, you'll feel good knowing he's encased in a polyurethane foam composite shroud, allowing him to tumble gingerly upon each rotation. Moreover, should Fluffy unfortunately be mixed in with denser objects like this steel-toed work boot, each Umax dryer is specially calibrated to keep heavier objects near the bottom of the load, thus reducing harsh collisions. In the end, Fluffy may be a little warm and disoriented, but at least he won't be dead. Umax Appliance Technologies, making dryers a safer place for cats. No animals were harmed in the making of this commercial. We just made it sound that way. That's the great thing about radio. Cats don't need to die to make your company grow. For more information on radio advertising, contact the Portland Area Radio Council. Where were you in your head? You were looking at the dryer all the time right now, okay? So this is the visualization that would normally not occur, but they just did this amazing job with you staring in your mind at the dryer. If you want to sell the dryers, keep them there, okay? You're the director. Anchor the verbs. Oh, I love verbs. Why? Because verbs create visualization in your brain. But verbs in second person singular or plural, active verbs and present tense verbs. Okay, what does that mean? Don't use past tense. Don't use future tense. Use present tense. I said, look underneath your chair, take the candy, put it on your hand, okay? This is what you need to do. And one of the most important, the most powerful words is the word you, okay? Use it a lot. Don't use we or our, ever. So the verbs, and then we have this. Oh my God, fishing, tattoos, what's this woman about, you know? I don't even fish, but I know that with this one, I can catch one fish, right? And it's the same with information in a radio ad. Okay, what did I, I did not want to be rude, but I just wanted to show you that some people just cram so much information into a radio ad that when you throw it, people can't catch it. It's the same with fishing. One ad, one message, okay? Don't cram in everything. A little 
thing that could help you is that when you write a radio ad or a radio trail, just give it to five people and they read it. If they don't all know what one message is that you wanted to convey, throw it away, start again. Okay. Dark, rainy days. You get back home and your shoes weigh twice as much as when you went out. I'm back. You better not have gone out in those new shoes. No. Your coat is steaming on the radiator. You're not putting that sopping coat on the radiator again, are you? No. And your umbrella's forming a puddle in the hall. And I hope you left that umbrella outside. Yes. So it may seem like an odd time of year to be saying this, but while your shoes might be full of water, after one of the driest summers on record, the reservoirs aren't. Which is why Thames Water is asking you to adopt a few water-saving habits. Not like making the tea with the water out of your shoes, just simple things like not leaving the tap running while you brush your teeth. This can save up to five litres each time and help us all reduce the possibility of a hosepipe ban later on. Thames Water. Every drop counts. What's the one message? Save water. Okay? No telephone, no email, no website. You don't need to have that. Okay? And this was just a campaign that just had, I don't know, five different ads like that. Number five. Oh, and now she's into cowboy movies. Right. Okay, so shoot the cliches. Okay. Cliches are like uh, Christopher Hitchens says, avoid cliches like the plague. All right. And I want you to do that. Why? Because a cliche is predictable. If something is predictable, you do not have their attention. And your only goal is to get and hold the attention when they're listening to your ads. So shoot the cliches. Right, what's that? A postcard, okay? In all my seminars I do around the world, my Aunt M, I'm not just say M, she writes postcards wherever she goes. And for me, a postcard is a symbol of cliché. What is on the other side of this postcard, English people? What, what, what did she say? Wish you were here or something like that? Yes? Are these things that people write in postcards, right? And this is exactly what you need to think about when you're writing ads. Think about Linnea's Auntie M, right? And when you write it and you go through the text and you go cliche, 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 that's fine. You'll do it a lot. I still do it after 11 years. But take a highlighter pen, do you say it like that? And just highlight it and then throw it out and put some other verbs which are not predictable. And then we go straight to my favorite tool, which is put a Robert Frank stamp on it. Robert Frank, who's Robert Frank? It's a photographer. He's Swiss, but he lived in America and he, uh, and he took photographs uh, all over America and put it in a book called The Americans, right? And he just goes around, and he just went around, you know, taking photos of ordinary people. And what would you say this scene is of? Is it something nice, funny, happy? No? W w where do you think it was taken? Funeral. Funeral. How did you know? There was no basket. There were no mourners. Why? Because he, you could still capture a scene, but from a different perspective, right? And this is what I want you to do when you're writing ads. Think about Robert Frank. How would he take the picture? 99% of photographers would take a picture. We all know how it would look. But he's done it differently. Okay? So whenever you start writing an ad, I know you will start in a cliche way and let it. You know, just let it. Let your mind go. But then when you're rewriting it, just think, how would Robert Frank do it? And I want you to now listen to an ad, the beginning, uh, and then I will um, analyze it for you. Bubble wrap. Wonderful stuff. A harmless addiction for adults of all ages. But when you actually need it, when you're moving house, for example, can you find it? No, you've popped it all. At the big yellow self-storage company, they understand. Which is why they don't just have the space you need for moving, they also have the stuff you need. Boxes, crates, sofa covers, packing tape, and of course, bubble wrap. Big Yellow Self Storage. What can we store for you? If you've popped all your bubble wrap, don't worry. 
you can buy a huge range of packing materials, including boxes, tape and, of course, bubble wrap. From one of Big Yellow's conveniently located stores, there's bound to be one that's handy for you. For details of your local store, call free on 0800 783 4949 or visit www.bigyellow.co.uk. Right, he started in a perfect Robert Frank way, right? And then she killed it. I would just cut her off. We don't need her, right? She, there were a lot of cliches. An e uh, what was at the end? Telephone number, website. You don't need that. She was too much. He was enough. Number seven. Radio's four languages. Ha, a wheel. Speech, sound effects, music, and... Go on, I can hear it. Silence. Silence. Thank you. Yes? And they all need to work in unison, you say that, unison, like the wheels of a car, right? Sometimes what I hear is that they would put speech in it and then they just have to put music in it. Why? Radio is nothing but live stories. Radio ads are nothing but stories from life. And life doesn't have a soundtrack, soundtrack under every situation you go through, does it? You don't need it. If you put in music, then the music doesn't need to talk, you know, doesn't need to say the same thing, but it has to uplift what the, the speech or the words have been saying all along. So these are the seven tools. God, I ran out of time. Um, so I would just like to say that brutally cut from your copywriting playlist, these things. First one, the name of the brand business show anywhere it would not appear in a normal conversation. Yeah? Second one, anything that listener already knows or can easily find out. Your con consumer is your wife. She's not stupid. She'll find the bloody address. All right? Um, statement that reflect the awareness of a competitor. I still don't know why they do it. And imagine, at the beginning of a sentence, imagine you are standing on the peak of the mountain. Why? It's like I would say, I will give you a compliment now, and then I give you the compliment. No, 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 just go and say it. You are standing, yes? You and verbs, present tense. So bottom line, remember this. The most satisfying compliment a reader can pay is to tell me that he or she feels personally addressed. Christopher Hitchens. And when you communicate with the listener through a radio spot, you, you have to hear the listener silently talking back. This is what I want you to take away. You're talking to a friend and she needs, he needs to talk back. So yes, I do believe that radio is beautiful. And so are all of the presenters who truly love radio. And so are you. So, um, Words do change lives, and you can do it every day in your radio ads and radio trails because you need to be relevant to the people you're writing to. And um, in the 18 minutes, 19 minutes we've had, uh, there were 3,935 radio listeners born, right? And you're going to change their world, so thank you. <laughs> I can't believe that we've been here for about two and a half, three hours, and we've talked about 12 or 13 completely distinct things. The format is great, and uh, I'm just really pleased with it. It hammers through loads of different things. You can, you can barely keep up. It's a bit relentless, but in a good way. It's been a great day. Um, lots of good people to talk to, lots of good people to listen to, and learn lots of good things. Next.